welcome everyone let's go through this analogy first we have two characters here the first one is mr letter and the second one is miss sentence so mr letter greets miss sentence and tells her that i have a space of my own uh, this is given to me by java and it is called as character data type so miss sentence here asks him whether she can join him so he says i wish you could but unfortunately that space is simply not designed for you so she says that's kind of sad i think i'm not required by java but then uh, mr letter tells her that that is not true because everybody has a place in java and yep yeah, as a sentence you too would have a place in java so the space given by java to sentences is basically string and that is what we are going to see in our next topic of discussion so what is a string basically so we all have seen numbers which can be stored using integers and if we have more numbers so in order to store those numbers what we do is we use the arrays which are nothing but spaces which hold sequential numbers or integers so what do we do when we have multiple characters to handle because we know that a single character can be handled by using the character variable what in cases of say multiple words or sentences how do we handle those well to handle those we have something called as string and its syntax starts with a capital s so a character is nothing but a single character but when you talk about multiple characters it is called as a string so when you talk about multiple characters and sentences those can be handled using a string and java actually gives you quite a few functions to handle these so let us take a look at these functions one by one Uh, we have a length, length function which actually gives you the length of the string. Caret function. To be honest, there are quite a few functions. We have length, we have caret, then we have concat, we have equals, we have equals igno case, we have index of, replace, we have last index of, to lower case, to upper case, and trim. So let us do one thing. Let us go ahead and take a look at these functions one by one. These are pretty easy to implement. So I would just type in few strings and uh, we can see how these functions basically work. So uh, let me switch to my editor again. Yeah. So let us go ahead and create class first. So let us call it say string prep, and there you go. So how do you declare a string basically? What you do is you just type in string with s capital. and you use a variable name say s1 in this case or simply say s and i pass in a value to it say in double inverted commas which should be say words our words i go ahead and create one more string so we can have multiple functions on these strings s1 dot say dot hey hey there you go you have two strings now already so what we are going to do is we are going to perform some operations on these strings one by one so to start with let us say i want to print in the output and in the output what i do is i calculate the length of my first string say ln gth of my string so let us go ahead and try to do that to do that what to do is we have a function called as length so we use the name of a string dot and there you go that is the first function which is available length so when i execute this piece of code it gives me the length which is 15 just for better visibility sake run it again there you have length of my string is 15 let us try and do something else i'm going to use another function called as caret now what caret does is given a particular index it tells me where exactly is that so called character placed say for example character is present at index let's go back and say s dot caret and the index is say my zeroth index or uh, let us say yeah let's take zero for reference now and let us run this code so what it does is it says character is present at index which is w 
because my zeroth index points to this number. So if I had used some other values, say for example, one, it could have given me the index O or the character O, which is good. Yeah, there you go. So that is what caret does. It returns you the value at the given index. So now let us go ahead and try one more function. This time I'm going to do the concatenation. Now concatenation is nothing but it's a funny word which is basically used for addition. That is it adds given strings. So let us go ahead and do that. Say plus s dot concat and this time let's say s1. There you go. So this one cannot be resolved. So let us just try to contact these two strings for now. There you go. The output as we can see is uh, it gives you words are word. Words are word. That is it has concatenated these two strings basically. So let us go ahead and try out some other functions that to be honest there are quite a few functions which um, you can do using strings and those are fairly easy. There's nothing too complicated in it but yeah they're quite helpful. So we've just seen concat. We also have something called as equals. So in order to do that, let's first. So by the text which I've typed right now, you would have understood what does the equals function does. It checks whether given strings are equal or not. Plus s dot. So s dot equals. There you go. And what I pass in is say this object and what it will do is it would compare these two strings whether they are equal or not. And I run the code now. Are these strings equal or not? It says false. That means these strings are not equal. What if they had the same text? Say for example, let's say hey, 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 hey. And let's run the code now. They are equal. What if this was capital? Now the same but you have to understand one thing that the text which I have entered the first string is capital and second is n. So it says they are not equal it means that it's false basically. So what do I do for these strings to match? Can I do that? So there is one more function called as equals ignore case which would actually ignore their case and check whether they are same or not. That is this and say I pass in this one again. So this time when you compare it and say okay, it says are these strings equal or not? It says true. That means it has deemed these two strings to be equal because it has ignored the fact that this is capital. So even that can be done. If you want to ignore cases, you can use this function. Now there's something called as index of basically. So what index of does is say for example I select this and I run this code. It gives me an index say minus one. Say for example, I put in a particular value there. So if I just put in the index here, say for example, I put in a character E, it would give me its index. So it gives me minus one. There's a reason for it because I do not have E in my first string. I have it in caps. So say I put in There you go. The first index is 1 because this is 0 and this is 1. Now if I put in H, I say run, give me 0. Now what does this signify? As in whenever you type in a particular a character, it would give you the index of its first appearance. So when I said H, it was 0 because I have multiple H here. So it would give you the index of its first occurrence. This is an important point to note. So there you go. There's one more function which would actually help you just about replace the values of your so-called strings or values in your so-called strings. Say for example s dot replace and this time say I replace my old character say my e with my new value which is say h. Now this is a character replacement we are talking about. I'm afraid it has to be inverted commas because yeah, there you go. And I say run. You have that here. So as you can see, E has been replaced with H. So this is what the 
replace function does then you have other functions like lowercase uppercase so what we would do is now we have string one in uppercase already so let us just convert it to say lowercase and let's go ahead and let's say run there you go everything is converted to lower so i could have likewise gone ahead and converted this to uppercase as well and i would have said run and there you go everything is converted to uppercase this is in case of second string which is s1 so yeah that pretty much sums up all the operations which you can perform uh, i don't remember anywhere mm, yeah we have one more left we have something called as string now or trim i should say say for example i have this first string which has spaces here and i need to get rid of those spaces so i have a function called as basically trim which would trim out all the spaces that are there and you don't have to worry about it so there is no space here no space here so that is what trim does so basically we've seen all the functions that string deals with that is length caret concat equals equal signal case uh, we have index of replace to lowercase uppercase and trim so that is what strings are and that is how you handle strings in uh, java so let us move ahead and take a look at our next concept now uh, so yeah this brings us to the last topic of today's module that is string buffer now we all have studied strings string buffer is very similar to strings we have one more concept called as string builder which is again similar to these two but there are slight differences between the three so let us discuss these one by one first what a string buffer is it is nothing but it is a java class which is mutable in nature and it is both read and write so how is it different from a normal string and what does it do now if you take a look at string what string does is once you create a particular object and assign a value to it uh, if you are supposed to assign a new value to it it has to be assigned at a new memory location so that is where a string is restricted you cannot use the same memory location for another object or value whereas a string buffer lets you do that suppose if you uh, used a particular memory location using your string buffer you can allocate or you can change values for that memory location or update values in the very same memory location using the same object a string buffer that is why it is mutable and it is again similar to something called as your uh, string builder so what is the difference between a string builder and a string buffer both are mutable and both let you work on the memory space that is there and update it but a string builder is not thread safe whereas a string buffer is thread safe now this is one concept which we are going to see in third and fourth module so once we get into the details or we understand concepts where we talk about thread and all those things you will be understanding what thread safety is so that is when i would be able to talk about these ways in which a string builder is built so this part and this part is discussion for the next two modules probably for now all we have is a string buffer which is nothing but something an advancement over a string where you can actually modify or update your space which is available with you so when should we use a string and when a string buffer well as the answer says if you want to use a memory space or you do not want to make changes to the given memory space and you are happy with using the same value for the given memory space then you should stick to strings else you should use a string buffer which is a better option since it is mutable so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and give you a small demo where we can see that a string buffer is actually mutable so let me quickly switch to my editor so there you go i've gone ahead and created a simple code here in the code as you can see we have a class called as string buffer demo and what i've done is i've created two strings using a string buffer class and uh, i've given it two values hello and word in string buffer you do not use concatenate you use append instead but the function is same so when i just go ahead and append my string 1 and with my string 2 basically what happens is it merges the string but if i had done it using a normal string and i had concatenated it if i had printed the value of string 1 it would have been the same that is in this case it is hello 
So even after concatenation, if I had printed the value of string one, it would have given me hello. But in this case, when I run this piece of code, I basically get a new value, which is hello world. That means the value in string one has been replaced. So uh, my string buffer is basically mutable. That is the only difference between uh, your string buffer and your string. So this pretty much wraps up the session for uh, today's presentation. All we have left with is our show called assignments. So I've made sure that I've put in quite a few assignments here. We have single array assignments which deal with single dimensional arrays basically where you are supposed to perform a few operations like calculating the largest element and all those things. Fairly easy for you people if you focused on the array part. Next one is for two dimensional arrays where you're supposed to calculate transpose or subtract a particular matrix from the other matrix which you can do as well. Third one talks about functions where calculating cubes, palindromes and all those basic questions have been put into it. And we have function overloading where cube can be calculated by giving in different values where the method name remains the same but the arguments change. We have three other assignments. The first one deals with uh, basically your functions. Second one kind of deals with uh, function overloading. And we have the third one that also deals with strings to some extent. So we would be sharing these assignments with you and even the solutions would be given to you but we expect you to perform these on your own so that you have sufficient hands-on to actually get introduced to Java because the concepts are very easy to understand but the more you practice the more hand you will have of all these concepts. So yeah, happy learning to all of you and uh, this more or less wraps up the module on my end. So thank you. Bye-bye.